From Earth, when we look into the sky, we use our eyes. But can we use our ears? Hi, I'm Jim Green, Chief Scientist at NASA, and this is the Gravity Assist Podcast. In this season of Gravity Assist, we'll go behind the scenes at NASA, and we'll hear from the scientists and engineers and others who make these amazing space missions happen. I'm here with Kim Arcand, and she is a visualization scientist and a science communicator for NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. How do you approach this challenge of turning satellite data into sounds? For us, data sonification really is a way of taking information that, for the most part, humans can't see, right? If you're working with X-ray light, no human naturally can see X-rays. That's why we have these telescopes, be able to do that really hard work for us. So it's all about translating something you can't see into something you can experience. Let's listen to your rendition of the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, and then tell us how you put that together. This is a very classic image. It's, of course, our home galaxy. We're looking at the inner about 400 light year region around the supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star, at the very core of the Milky Way. And particularly as you approach the supermassive black hole, as you skew across the image from left to right, you'll hear there's this massive crescendo, and it's where all the sort of action is happening. So again, just sound-wise, what you're listening for, the infrared is going to be played as a soft piano, the optical or the mid-range will be played as a plucky violin, and then the highest energy x-rays will be this really high-noted xylophone sound. Well, another really great one is the Crab Nebula. You know, that's a cosmic object that we've studied for, you know, centuries, uh, you know, because it originally started in 1054 with a massive explosion. Well, let's listen. So for this piece, we wanted to be able to hear those individual things, right? So the x-rays from Chandra are like harsh brass sound and the optical light from the Hubble Space Telescope would be like the lighter strings and the infrared data from Spitzer which is the lowest energy material that is like soft woodwinds type of sound so there's a lot going on but if we were somehow near Crab Nebula we wouldn't be able to hear sounds like this because for one thing you need to have some sort of medium for sound to be able to transfer to you through and we don't have that in space Astronomy has sort of prioritized visuals for a long time, but there's no reason why you can't include other senses as well. 